Hello. Let's talk about something that applies to everything. I like doing videos like this. By the way, do you see this this uh, 1965 Postman's leather bag behind me here? I think this one's from 1962 or 1965. Looked like crap. It took me like four hours to restore it. That bag will last far beyond my lifetime. When I got it, I talked to the person and he said, his mother wanted him to throw it away because it looks so ratty. Now that's a thousand dollar bag. Easily a thousand. Very rare. Um, this is not about those bags, by the way. Now, I don't pretend to be an environmentalist, and I never have pretended to be an environmentalist, but one aspect of uh, being someone that uh, you know doesn't uh, consume and throw away crap, cheap crap made in China that is designed to fail, Enter the words planned obsolescence. Um, the reason why I am an environmentalist, so to say, is that I've always lived a life philosophy that, and this is true back in the old days, when you want to buy something that you basically use on a daily basis, why don't you like spend $20 more and get one that will last for the rest of your life, right? So which, which is more expensive, like buying item X Okay, or buying item Z that's $20 more, and uh, for $20 more, the item will last you the rest of your life. And of course, I'm, I'm giving a rough estimate here. It depends, obviously, on the price of the item. And now, I know you're not going to believe me when I say this. Here's one example. I've only ever used, and I'm surprised I haven't lost it yet, said the fat guy showing a fork, right? <laughs> I've only ever used one fork for the past um, at least 18 years. Only one fork, and this is it. This is a all 100% pure titanium fork. It's made in Japan, by the way. I've actually got a couple of these bowls. I saw a used one. My other bowl, this is one that I've not ever used. Um, is I have an identical bowl to this one that I should have brought that one in. It's kind of uh, scratched up a little bit. These are also pure titanium. Sorry about that loud noise. This stuff, by the way, you can get these off of eBay. Just type in titanium bowl or fork or spork. Um, they're made either in Sweden or Japan. Um, wonderfully, the Chinese don't produce titanium items like this. The real issue with titanium, by the way, is that it's extremely, extremely difficult to work with. Machine and stamp and everything. Machining titanium, ask a machinist how, like, insanely impossible it is to machine titanium. Um, this stuff is, will last far beyond my lifetime. You'll only ever need one of them. It's clean, it's indestructible, it's insanely lightweight. I mean, stuff like this. I mean, if I ever think of something in my life, which I have most of my life, you know, I use this every day. Well, why don't I find one that's going to last me the rest of my life, however long that is or is not? Um, you know, back in the day, the of course, we know about the industrial... Um, uh, factories that were spitting out enormous amounts of pollution and crap, right? You know, uh, coal factories, just these horrible plants that were just like dumping, you know, zillions of tons of toxic waste. Okay, well, back in the old days, those people weren't environmentally conscious. No, actually, just the opposite is the truth. If you actually think about it, now those are the factories and the industrial complexes that were insanely polluting and dirty. But on the individual basis, because most people were poor as piss, what they did is they uh, bought, like from Sears and Roebuck or JCPenney, they bought an item and they only ever had to buy one, essentially. You know, that's not true of all things. Obviously, some things, you know, wear out because you use the hell out of them. But in most cases, when someone bought one, they only ever had to buy one. Back in those days, washing machines, they lasted forever. Um, there's countless, countless items where you bought one and that was it. Those people were the true environmentalists. Now, everybody thinks, well, you know, depending on whether it's Europe and, you know, certain parts of like San Francisco, you know, some of these environmentally conscious people. No, those people, um, and this of course is due to the economy, and of course there's a lot of reasons for that, which I'll get into very, very briefly, but I mean, it should be obvious to you. Now, those are the people that are 
buying stuff that's very, very disposable. It is designed with, with planned obsolescence in it, just like an iPad. Everybody knows, and even Apple has uh, unfortunately have been revealed to, you know, talk about their plan. I can't get around this. There's no alternative for an iPad. You know, all technology is will only last a few years, and then you got to replace it. I mean, hopefully it should be recycled, but uh, obviously so for obvious reasons. Um, no, those are the people that are environmentally unconscious. They just they keep buying crap that falls apart and they have to order new stuff. And the obvious reason for that is both computers and, I mean, I just like daily stuff that we use. It is designed to fail. Planned obsolescence. If you don't know what planned obsolescence is, look it up. I mean, it is literally designed to only last a year or two or three, depending on the product and how expensive the product so that you, of course, have to buy another one. I mean, what the F would you think if you were a company? Well, we're going to make one of these, and someone will only ever have to buy one. And, well, that means that, you know, that's not going to be a repeat customer. God forbid that you actually make something that's going to last in a, a person's entire lifetime. Well, what the hell what kind of repeat business are you going to get off of that person? No, we got to make this shit self-destruct within a year, two, or three, depending on the item, so they come back and buy another one. <laughs> Planned obsolescence. Um, everything that I can buy um, that I think or I'm certain that will last for the rest of my life, I literally have only used, believe it or not, one fork for the past upteen years, and it is this one. I have no idea how I haven't lost it yet. These are usually like uh, 20 bucks on eBay. It's pure, pure titanium made in Japan. Some of them are Snow Peak. Some of them are others like uh, Keith makes them. They're strictly titanium. They make titanium thermos bottles and plates and cups. It's just one example though, like a Swiss Army knife. Um, I've got a couple of them. Uh, the one I you know, beat the hell out of for 20 years and you know, I begrudgingly had to buy another one. But that's because I didn't really treat it right. I kind of abused it, and that's uh, my fault. But uh, um, so much happier. You know, but here's a perfect example. My house in uh, Florida, I had these. They're so awesome. They were made back in the 60s. They're can openers. Of course, now we have the pull-top lids for cans, right? I had these uh, old can openers from the 60s. They were indestructible. And my mother, bless her soul, what she did, I had two of them in there. I bought them off of eBay. She threw those away. And she's like, oh, you know, that, those were slightly rusty. I was like, yeah. She threw them away. And she's like, well, I replaced it with a new one that she got like at Walmart, which had a plastic handle on it. And of course, it was a piece of shit made in China designed to self-destruct. I kid you not, even though that was purchased new, it lasted like four months before the handle like broke off of my hands. Like, there you go, cheap piece of shit made. So what I had to do, since they don't make can openers like that anymore, I had to go on eBay and buy some of those, and there's tons of them on eBay, tons. Because they made them for like 25. They're indestructible, they'll last forever. I went on eBay and I bought a, a couple more of uh, the old 1960s, all metal can, just totally bulletproof indestructible. I'll never need another one. Of course, now we have pull tabs on cans. <laughs> we don't really need can openers anymore. You still do with some cans. Um, the point being is even though I don't pretend to be an environmentalist, uh, it makes me so much happier to know that like when I buy something, other than losing it, I will never have to buy another one, ever. That is ideal environmentalism. But it's not environmentalism for the sake of environmentalism. It is something you actually have to lure people as like, well, you know, this is the environmental thing to do. Most people say, you know, who gives a shit, you know, too busy. It's like, no, let me approach it to you from this perspective. This is better. It's made better. It'll last forever. It's cleaner. It's pure titanium, which is this is the same stuff they embed. Like if you get a hip. Hip replacement, you know, they give you a titanium hip. You, you, you need a knee replacement, it's a titanium knee. You know, surgical grade, implant grade, human implant grade, titanium. You only ever need one of them, you know? People, when you tell them that, they will actually want to buy it. You'll never have to buy another. It's never going to fail. It's never going to break. It's the best. 
It's indestructible. Well, sure, that makes sense. You don't have to actually sell them on environmentalism. What you do is you actually tell them what's true. It's like, this makes life easier. You buy one and you'll never have to buy another one. Um, I hate this plan. You know, everything sold at Walmart has built-in self-destruction timer on it. Like, as soon as you buy it, it's the, the clock starts ticking on the damn device. It's guaranteed to self-destruct. I forget which coffee maker it was. I don't know if it was Mr. Coffee or somebody else, but there was this leaked memo where they showed how they built in a defect in the coffee maker that was basically designed to self-destruct at two years roughly. But since the coffee maker is 40 bucks, after two years, the average Joe, well, like, well who gives a shit? You know, I'm going to go buy another one. It's only 40 bucks. Yeah. Companies don't want to make stuff that lasts forever because they're never going to get your return business. You know, does that make them greedy pricks? Oh, absolutely it does. But uh, you need to see through that. I mean, the reason why, by the way, yeah, my, my favorite juicer down in Florida, I love to juice because there's so many oranges and grapefruits in Florida. It's just, oh my God, the fruit is everywhere. Is that this old friggin' juicer, I've got like six of them, I see them at flea markets. It's bulletproof and it's way better than any modern juicer. Awesome. Every time I see one for like five, but I don't know why I buy it. I got like six of them down in Florida. Is that environmentalism? I don't know. Should I own six of them? No. <laughs> I love stuff like that. I'll never have to buy another juicer. I'll never have to buy another bowl. This is also pure titanium. I'll never have to buy another one of these. You know, the more you can eliminate crap out of your life like that, the more you can concentrate on important stuff. You know, ask me why I drive a Toyota. Now, I love the United States, okay? I'm a pretty faithful American, as it were, but I'm never going to buy an American-made car. Screw that crap. Garbage. Self-destructing garbage. Ask me why I drive a Toyota again. Hello. Hello, McFly. Hello. Ask me why I drive a Toyota. Here's something else. <laughs> now, some of the old Toyotas, old ones, you know, they were rusting. They wouldn't uh, corrosion coat them before they went to the paint booth. So, I, you know, the old, old Toyotas. You see... When's the last time you saw a Toyota rusting? You know, I'll be driving down the road and I will see like a five-year-old or eight-year-old Chevy or Ford or GMs. It had the crap rusted out of it. It's like that car is only like four or five years old and it's already ready to fall apart due to rust. American-made POS. Americans just don't make anything anymore. The reason why is because uh, some academic uh, scumbags got it in their idea that young people after high school should desire to become a, uh, a academic puke. You know, rather than learning how to make stuff and build stuff, you know, used to be pride in that. This is why pump plumbers and electricians are paid a fortune because everybody in high school, I'm gonna go to college. Yeah, that's good. This is why the plumber is making $200 an hour but the college graduate is pissing in a bucket working at McDonald's. Like, hey, guy working at McDonald's, what, 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 what did you do? I just got out of college with the master's degree in English literature. Oh, that sounds great. I would like a cheeseburger and a hash brown and an extra. <laughs> I think you follow me. So, um, true environmentalism. Of course, I'm not going to comment on true environmentalism. But I mean, a, a good aspect of environmentalism is not being a perpetual consumer. Try to eliminate out as much crap as you can in your life that uh, you'll never have to buy another one. Why would you know? Computers were screwed on. Every computer, apples do last longer than any other computer, by the way. That's not my opinion. That's a fact. I don't care how much you hate Apple. Okay, and I never liked Steve Jobs, by the way. I don't care how much you hate Apple. It's a hardcore written in stone fact that an Apple computer will outlive almost everything. Now you're going to say, well, I had an Apple computer and it died within a couple... So what? That's an anecdotal representation. On the whole, Apple computers will outlast everything. Um, except for maybe like a $6,000 Panasonic Toughbook. 
Um, but who the hell buys those damn things except for the military and the police? I guarantee you, you're not buying a Panasonic Tough Book. Okay? And those will last about as long as an apple, probably a hair longer. Um, point being is, buy crap that lasts. This, by the way, when it comes to photography, this is why old manual lenses are so great. Not this particular one, which is radioactive, by the way. This lens is hardcore radioactive. Is that there's no autofocus motor in them to burn up. There's no electronics. There's nothing. It is a manual focus lens. Other than you dropping it, you know, or your dog peeing on it, it will last you far beyond however long you plan to be kicking. You feel me? Here's something else. I go through brushes to like clean cameras and stuff. Here's another example. This is why I buy used shit on eBay, especially shit from the 1950s, 40s, and 60s. Now this is for women, right? I don't know if you know what this is. But I go through brushes. They're like clean cameras, and they're usually big, and they don't last that long. Well, it's because all those brushes are cheap crap made in China. This is a, uh, a mirror. I think this is, I got a German one, and I got uh, some American white one. It's called a lipstick brush. And of course, you clean it in some soapy water and then some isopropyl alcohol to clean all the makeup that might be out of it. This one was perfectly clean. And I use these for like cleaning cameras and lenses. I put these in my, my packs. This is solid brass and horsehair. This thing, if treated properly, will last a perdurable eternity. It certainly lasts longer than I'll ever be around. And look how compact it is. This is called handmade quality shit. Handmade quality. Excuse me for cussing there. Sometimes you, you know, this is why I buy old used things from the 60s and because that crap is made to last. This is why the people, uh, mostly because they're poor as hell, of course, you know, they could only afford to buy one. If they're going to buy one, it's going to last. This is why the uh, people in the 40s and the 50s and the 60s, they were actually, you know, unbeknownst to true environmentalists because they would buy something to last. And if it broke, God forbid, they would fix it. Not because they were a fixer-upper, because it was necessity, because, you know, they didn't have any money. That crap broke, I'm going to fix it. People that die, like, ah, it's a cheap piece of plastic crap made in China. It was time for it to break anyway. I'm going to go to Walmart and buy another one. You know what China's biggest export is? Plastic crap to Walmart. If I'm lying, I'm dying. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you like this educational video. This is called Real Environmentalism. Yeah, being conscious about buying crap that is designed to self-destruct. So you'll be forced to go out and buy a new one. Because that's what companies want. They don't want you to buy a great product that'll last forever. What's, well, you know, where's the profit in that? Sell one and done? No, we want repeat customers. That's like, that's exactly, by the way, what drug dealers do. We're going to get Joe hooked on this crap. He's going to be back tomorrow to buy some more. <laughs> Companies that make this crap that is designed to self-destruct, they are no different than a freaking drug dealer. No different. Not that I have any experience with that, okay? Don't infer anything. Homie's never done drugs, and he never will. Thank you so much for watching. До свидания, увидимся, алоха, с Новым годом, all that stuff. Oh, yeah, and алоха. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do.